You know, today is the last day of 2023, as I mentioned. It has been wild, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Feel free to join. There's not many of us, so your voices are welcome. Thank you. <laughs> It has. If there ever was a time, I think, for Kujijagulia, this would be it. Remember, Kujijagulia is self-determination. I also think of it as self-creation, maybe self-manifestation, maybe self-definition. The second principle of the Nguso Saba, that is seven principles, is from the official Kwanzaa website, both a commitment and a practice. Kujijagulia demands that we, as an African people, and remember all people are African people, peoplehood comes from Africa, we as an African people define, defend, and develop ourselves instead of allowing or encouraging someone else to do this for us. Kujijagulia requires recovering lost memory and once again shaping our world in our image and our interest. It is a call to recover and speak to our own cultural truth, to the world, and to make our own unique contribution to the forward flow of human history. Does that sound like the Community Church Project or what, my friends? That sounds like the moment that we're in. Well, it sounds like the moment we're coming to. We are in a strange in-between space. And I think Kujijagulia is no less important now before we have our space and before we have our lens through which to create ourselves. Now, the author of our celebration, of our holiday, Dr. Maulana Karenga, maybe says it best. It is in a time in which occupation and oppression of countries and peoples are immorally presented as necessary, even salvational, that Kujijagulia rejects and reaffirms the right of persons and peoples to determine their own destiny and their own lives. And that includes us, our right to determine our own destiny and speak to our own lives. It speaks to our right to live in peace and security and to flourish in freedom. Again, Dr. Karenga. But I might be getting ahead of myself. Let's start over. Good afternoon. <laughs> Did I catch you off guard? That was a little smaller than before. Come on, good afternoon. good afternoon. This is important, and we share our voices together on purpose, church. We say these things. I ask you to speak together on purpose. The last time I was here in this space, Reverend Peggy and I talked about, uh, uh, our, we shared our memorial service, and we talked about grief, longing, and what it is that we have left behind. It was October, and I think we were just coming to terms with what has happened in our world that began on October 7th. And I think now we are witnessing some of that destruction out there in a new way, a new and maybe too familiar way. What do we do, church, in a time of war? And that is not a rhetorical question. What do we do? Do we join in? I imagine this church does not. Do we fight against war? Yes, some of us do, but some of us can't. You know, I tend to avoid quoting the Bible because not all of us see it as a source of truth or a source of spiritual inspiration. But I will share that one of my leaders, St. Paul, in the Bible tells us, we bless in times of war. Bless and do not curse.
But you know, I think I'm getting ahead of myself again. It's never too late to start again. This will be our third time today. Let's, let me go back. Good afternoon, church. Why do we keep saying good afternoon? What is it? What is the word for? Because I need to be clear, when I address you, when I take up this space, it is not as a you, you minister. It is my tradition to speak from my office. I'm here as a chaplain and I am offering pastoral care. It is a pastoral concern that I occupy this pulpit at all. And now more than ever, I think we need words of comfort and words of blessing, words of kindness, generosity, invitation, and affirmation. Words like good afternoon. Good afternoon is a wish. It is a prayer. It is a request. It isn't helpful for me just up here to stand and discuss the things that scare us unless I am doing it to help us. And I am not an expert in the world. I'm not an expert on what's happening outside of my little corner of it. I'm a New Yorker. I'm just as myopic as the rest of New Yorkers. My imagination uh, of the world ends in New Jersey and starts up again somewhere around uh, Long Island. I, I do my best to lean into what is happening in the world, not because I'm good at it, but because it is required as a citizen of it. As a New Yorker, I cannot rest in my myopia, even though it may be anything outside the five boroughs is a little less real. No, I am coming today as a chaplain of this community. I am a witness and a partner with all of you. I am not new to the dark places in the world, and I'm not afraid of what ails us. I'm not afraid of what ails you, friends. I'm not afraid of what ails our world. But don't think for a moment that's because I'm not scared. Because I am. Did you think you were the only one who was scared? I would be willing to guess we're all a little bit scared. But no, I am here not just to sit in the fear, but to share with you all words of kindness, words of hope, words of blessing, words like, good afternoon. afternoon. (laughs) I thought maybe you forgot. You know, I have been saying this word, blessing, in this congregation, in this community, a lot, and I don't know that we all mean the same thing, and it's okay if we don't, but I've been saying this word so long, we should at least come to some agreement on what blessings are and what blessings do. I've been saying it so long, I don't know if we do. So when I say, bless you, that's okay, it's a sneezy time, Sometimes I say bless you and folks get shocked. They think I've caught them in something. Or worse, in New York, and maybe as New Yorkers you'll understand this, I slip up and say, God bless you. Ooh, I wince a little when I say it, and often my wincing in saying it is enough for the person receiving it to wince a little in hearing it. We shorten bless you, not because, God, there's, not because there's anything wrong with God, but because sometimes the phrase invokes religious trauma instead of the kindness and healing and openness that we want. Or worse, if you say, God bless you, you may inspire a random New Yorker to turn up perk up their ears and share with you some of their doctrine, some of their religion, some of their opinions, and, well, there goes your whole train ride. (laughs) But the goal of blessings are innocent, right? I often sign my emails with simply blessings. In truth, it's not my favorite thing to say, but I do like what it means. I like the simplicity And I often mean something like, good be upon you, or may luck magically transform your fortune in positive ways. Maybe I mean something like, to life, as we say in Spanish, salud, or lechaim in Hebrew. 
A blessing does not require a certain worldview to be shared or to be received. A blessing is free kindness. Think of it as charity of the mouth, acknowledgement. It is for the betterment of yourself, for the receiver, and for any who hear it. Blessings are important. Now, I don't also like to quote the Pope for the same reasons. It provokes doctrinal quibbling, or I know not many people in this space afford a whole lot of value to his office, and so I try not to invoke his words with authority. You know, a year ago, I was afraid to even say Jesus in this space, and now I'm quoting the Pope and the Bible in one sermon, so you can take from that what you mean. But I want to be clear what I'm actually quoting, because the Dicastery for the Doctrine of Faith published a formal declaration this month, December 18th, actually, called Fiducia Supplicans, Supplicating Trust. And it's subtitled on the pastoral meaning of blessings. We're talking about blessings. This message was largely published under the heading of articles emphasizing the Pope granting blessings to same-sex couples. Have you seen some of these? Yes, and I'm sure you read through the entire encyclical, which is several pages long. If you didn't, that's okay. I'm going to skip ahead to numbers 24 and 25. From the point of view of pastoral care, blessings should be evaluated as acts of devotion that are external to the celebration of the holy sacraments. Indeed, the language, rhythm, and course, and theological emphasis of popular piety differs from corresponding liturgical actions. The church, moreover, must shy away from resting its pastoral praxis on the fixed nature of doctrinal or disciplinary schemes. This is the Pope we're talking about. Especially when they lead to a narcissistic and authoritarian elitism, whereby instead of evangelizing, one analyzes and classifies others. And instead of opening the door to grace, one exhausts your own energy inspecting and verifying. Thus, when people ask for a blessing, an exhaustive moral analysis should not be placed as a precondition for conferring it. For those seeking a blessing should not be required to have moral perfection. Now, I'll bet you weren't expecting to agree with the Pope today. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to lean into the Unitarian Universalist understanding that blessings are not based on inherent moral perfection. And if they were, Unitarian Universalists are created whole to begin with. And so blessings are a free gift that we can give and receive and even share with Catholics. This is why the Pope believes that they are so important, and I happen to agree. In a world where we can create ourselves and can create the world around us, this capacity for blessing is all important. This is the meaning of self-determination. This is the meaning of self-creation and self-manifestation in the context of Kwanzaa. It is what we are here to do, and blessing is where our words get their teeth. We lean into Kujijagulia today so that we can have our fresh start. I mentioned that today is the last day of 2023. And with self-determination, we can begin today just as if we were always meant to begin today. Fresh starts are cheap. We have done three of them so far already in this sermon, and we can do it again, regardless of what struggle we are encountering. Let today be that opportunity. The chime brings us to presence. Let's be that for each other. Self-determination is our gift, church. That's where we are in our moment of self-creation. So, let today be the first page of part two 
in your memoir. The rest was prologue. I have been saying it over and over, but church, I am also learning it. With practice, learning happens a little bit each day, and if you have ever learned something, you know what I'm talking about. Learning takes practice. Now, I have been spending a little bit of time with these UU principles, and I have learned a lot of what they can offer. I have scoured them for words of advice and guidance, and one in particular stood out to our Wellspring group. There is a word missing, and the word was humility. We will be talking more about this word in our conversation on Thursday, but for now, I want to lean into the meaning of humility when it comes to sharing blessings. Because we are all just people, just like John Henry. I stand up here not as someone different, but as a person, just like you all. And I know that our traditions are to look at the world as if it were miraculous. And today, I don't think that is hard for us to do. It is our human capacity to create the world we want to see. We speak it into existence. That is the meaning of self-creation. That is the meaning of self-determination. We say, I am, and that's not hard. You can even say it with me now. I am. Try it. I am. You can add anything you want to the end. Now, that won't make it true. I can say I am a lot of things, and that doesn't make it true, but it becomes a practice. When you say I am, it is an act of self-creation, and when you tack a word on the end, it becomes a practice of affirmation. You say, I am strong. I am powerful. I am loved. I am kind. I am important. I'm here for a purpose. We say these things as acts of self-creation. That was the original power of creation, and it is ours even now, because today is the day. Today is our day. We don't have any other moment than the one we are in right now. It may seem like years are made up of days, weeks, and months, but I tell you, and you know this if it's your experience, years are made up of moments and are made up of seconds. They go by faster than days, faster than weeks, faster than months. And today is our day to experience our present moment. Now, we run the risk, I think, of believing that this moment of self-creation, in this moment, we have to be more than we are. That this moment of self-creation, of self-determination, is about becoming something that we aren't already, and I want to just cut us off at those roots, because this is not about becoming something we aren't. We are not human becomings. We are not human doings. We're human beings. We already are, and that is what we become through Kujijagulia. So now at the end, I want to reiterate, good afternoon, church. This is something we say to each other as a testament to the act of self-determination, our ability to say the world and ourselves into being. We wish each other a good afternoon, no matter what kind of morning it's been because it's been a wild morning. But the morning of this season is long over. It is our afternoon, and we are wandering through the empty space of our afternoon for a long time. It feels like wandering. But we gather here so that we might be lifted from that wandering for just a moment. Morning might be over, but we will still gather as the community church, as ourselves, and wish each other a good afternoon. Not so that we might live, but that we might thrive. And church, I think by doing this, it will be a good afternoon. Amen.